So let's get into this. Year three for you. A lot of new moments in this organization, a redesigning, a reshaping. But you're the consistent element in this. How has that measure of consistency over these past couple of years being in D.C. become an advantage under a new regime and change? Well, I think it could be a tremendous advantage. You know, obviously you have relationships with, uh, you know, half the roster and, and a lot of uh, new bodies, new faces. Um, so kind of ingratiating those guys to what we do, how we do it. Um, augment those those areas um, organizationally, internally. Uh, so it's an exciting process that you know we're, we're looking forward to get going. When you think about player chemistry, obviously with a lot of new personalities, a lot of different new dynamics, what have they gone through that you've been able to bear witness to as far as building that off-court chemistry, and more importantly, how does it translate to on-court? Yeah, to their credit, you know these guys have been tremendous, uh, reaching out to each other over the summer, um, last two and a half, three months. Uh, connecting, you know, in various cities, workouts, uh, you know, dinners, going out together. I think those moments are invaluable. You know, it, it gives you insight on, the, you know, what makes guys tick, you know, uh, how to push people's buttons, you, you cultivate a deeper personal relationship. Um, that's going to pay dividends for us, you know. You get between those lines, you, you have to face some of, those, some of those tough moments, some of those hard and difficult conversations. Um, it's going to be an easy, easier thing to uh, navigate through. You have two players that have won championships in different cities. You also bring in Tyus Jones, who is a bit of an on-court coach, as you said before. But there's only one basketball. How do you reconcile on the offensive side of the ball, really being able to make sure everybody's able to have their portion, per se? Well, I think their willingness to move and share it. You know, we've seen it thus far in open run. You know, that, that ball keeps popping, and, and guys are, are willing to make the right plays. Uh, they, they're playing for each other. So that level of synergy, you know, uh, connectedness, uh, you're seeing it play out, so I'm excited to see where it goes, and you know, hopefully the trend continues. You have young players like Bilal Kulabali and Johnny Davis in his second year, and we know that there's going to be an emphasis on player development for them, but when you look at guys like Corey and Denny, who are only a couple of years ahead of them as well, where is that player development going to be for those players, and will that really manifest in quality minutes, or is it more of a non-game situation that will really show their improvement? Well, I think with the player development piece, you know, that's going to be ongoing, regardless if you're in your 15th season or you're in your first. There's always areas uh, where we can improve, um, areas where we can augment some deficiencies. So I think putting a plan in place and kind of laying it out, mapping out those steps for, for each guy, regardless of where they are you know, in their career, I think is important. But uh, for those younger guys, it's, it's going to be probably a few more steps than, um, than they're aware of. But um, you know, I think we're going to be patient with them, give them time to grow, mature, really surround them with the resources, the tools. Um, all the things that they need to perform at a high level, uh, I think will be available to them. There is a difference between winning and being successful. And obviously in your player development situation, sometimes the wins might not necessarily come. But from a coaching standpoint, what will be some of those successes on a night-to-night -night basis that you can be able to hang your hat on? Yeah, I think, you know, you see guys, you know, uh, improve incrementally. And it's game to game or practice to practice, you know, from, from month to month. Um, you know, whether it's in their retention of, of what we're trying to do schematically, is it in their approach, you know, overall on-court development. You know, there's a, so many small areas that may not show up, uh, you know, in a box, box score, but they, they're measurable. And, and I think, you know, if you can stack some of those measurements, you know, they'll compound themselves and eventually translate into, uh, you know, into wins. Final question, kind of really turning the coin a little bit to yourself. What will be the coaching development side and how will you measure your successes on a night-to-night -night basis? Well, I think, you know, with a few people, um, new additions to the staff, I think it's, it's going to be um, a growth mindset for us as well. You know, I think uh, we're going to prioritize the growth and development of our players, but we want to make sure that we're putting our guys in the position to have success. You know, we want to modernize, the, you know, our style, play a little faster, you know, uh, play a little more positionless basketball, uh, shoot more threes. So I think, you know, there's some growth uh, there tactically, but... Uh, yeah, I can't speak enough about how excited we are to get this thing going next Tuesday.